Okay, it's only been a few days since I made the last video, about the most distant galaxy ever. The galaxy that you see as a tiny red blob in this image, and that the scientists currently refer to as Glass Z13. With Z13 representing the distance to this galaxy. But now, only a few days later, there's quite a lot of chatter on Twitter. And I sort of joined in on the chatter, because there are these two new papers, or possibly even more than two, that might have discovered something even more unusual. Something even more extreme. And of course, something that was discovered in the new data provided by the wonderful James Webb Telescope. So, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss this absolutely incredible new discovery that's still extremely preliminary, but could fundamentally change the way we see the universe, or at least the way we see the early universe when the early stars and the early galaxies started forming. Because a lot of this new data suggests that we might actually have underestimated the age by which the galaxies have already formed, and also underestimated the age when the early stars formed as well. With these new studies suggesting that many of these stars might have formed much, much earlier, or maybe there's just something that we don't really understand about the early universe, and something we're going to be learning from the James Webb Telescope. Either way though, these new discoveries are sort of, at least at this point, controversial, and mostly because they sort of contradict a lot of the early predictions and a lot of modern understanding when it comes to the evolution of the universe in general. But I guess before I start, a huge side note. All of this is still very preliminary and has not been peer-reviewed, and more importantly, some of these studies might have actually misread certain galaxies as being more distant than they actually are. In other words, it will probably take a few months before all of this is officially confirmed, or before we can actually understand what's going on here. Anyway, let's start with the basics. So up to about this point, which is just about 1 billion years after the formation of the universe, we kind of have no problems. We understand that at this point, the so-called Dark Ages were finished, and that's essentially when all of these stars and galaxies in the universe produced so much ultraviolet light that it sort of changed a lot of neutral hydrogen into ionized hydrogen while at the same time allowing a lot of starlight to go through the universe without being absorbed by anything. But before that, because of the presence of neutral hydrogen, a lot of the starlight and a lot of light coming from various galaxies was essentially absorbed by this neutral hydrogen and to some extent was invisible to us. And because of this, it's sort of referred to as the Dark Ages. Whereas the first light formed approximately 375,000 years after the formation of the universe, and that's the iconic cosmic microwave background that's essentially visible in radio light and represents the first light when the first atoms started forming. But in between these two dates, there is a little bit of uncertainty. Actually, now there is a lot of uncertainty. First of all, it's not entirely understood when the first stars formed and when the stars started forming galaxies, also why they started doing so, and what led them to form more complex structures. A lot of modern ideas suggest that it's maybe something to do with the very mysterious and somewhat difficult to see cosmic web that you see right here. A kind of a structure that seems to be all over the universe and very likely is composed of a lot of gas, some stars, a lot of galaxies, and most likely a lot of dark matter, if of course it exists. But the actual web does exist and has been seen several times. But in order to answer some of these questions, the scientists really wanted to see some of these early galaxies, and more importantly, discover some of the early stars. They're usually referred to as population 3 stars, and essentially represent the stars only made out of hydrogen and helium, nothing else. That's very different from our own sun. Our sun contains quite a lot of different elements on the inside. And that's of course where James Webb comes in. It was supposed to be really good at finding all of this because of its ability to see the infrared light. And infrared light in this case is very important because at these distances, all of the original ultraviolet light from all of these very powerful stars has actually been redshifted into very specific infrared frequencies. And some of these frequencies Hubble was able to detect as well. But because of the frequencies that Hubble could see, its limit was set at approximately 400 million years after the beginning of the universe. Whereas as you can see from this image, Webb can see much much farther. In more scientific terms, for the Hubble telescope, the limit was the redshift of 11, or Z of 11. With the galaxy you see right here, known as GNZ11, being the most distant galaxy Hubble has ever discovered. This represents approximately 420 million years after the formation of the universe. For James Webb Telescope, 
The near cam can extend to approximately 5 microns of infrared light, which represents the age of the universe when it was less than 50 million years old. And a super quick side note, at these super far away distances, using the actual distance, which would be in billions of light years, or actually over 30 billion light years, it sort of makes it redundant and somewhat difficult to understand, and so because of this, the scientists usually use the idea of redshift. In one of the previous videos, I showed you this pretty good calculator that allows you to calculate all of this pretty quickly, the redshift calculator by Edward Wright. And so here, by calculating the redshift of 11, we can discover that the universe was only about 419 million years old, and the distance here was about 32.1 billion light years away from us, with the light traveling for 13.3 billion years, which transformed any ultraviolet light into infrared light that we can see with James Webb. And so last week, we talked about this new discovery of the galaxy Glass Z13 with the redshift of 13, which at that point was the most likely record holder. In this case, the redshift of 13 gives us the age of about 330 million years. But these two new papers were able to discover a bunch of more objects, with both of these papers focusing on the iconic first image of the galactic cluster SMAX 0723-73 the image that we were shown a few weeks ago. Here's, by the way, what it looked like with the Hubble telescope. Now, as you might already know, this cluster is also gravitationally lensed. You can obviously see it from the unusual warping of the galaxies. And this lens allows the scientists to see much farther than would be otherwise possible. And so the scientists actually analyzed the raw data from all of the observations of this cluster, with two teams identifying several dozen of new objects with some potentially being new record holders. And here it's important to highlight the word potentially. These are still very preliminary discoveries and definitely need to be looked at by other scientists. And so in this first paper, the scientists were able to discover 55 highly redshifted galaxies and 44 of them seem to be entirely new. But more importantly, six of them were at the redshift of over 12 and one of them was at the redshift of 16.7 which, if confirmed, would make it the new record holder. This would be a galaxy that's just over 230 million years old, at a distance of almost 35 billion light years away from us. And in order to discover these ancient galaxies, the scientists basically have to look for objects that aren't actually visible at shorter infrared wavelengths, but are visible at certain other wavelengths, which would imply that some of this neutral hydrogen absorbed the ultraviolet light coming from the early stars, but would then allow other light to pass through. And so if they actually discover objects that have these properties, it generally indicates that these must be ancient galaxies that existed during the Dark Ages. Although interestingly enough, a lot of these galaxies discovered so far seem to have a lot of mass in them already, possibly billions of masses of the sun of material with a lot of really massive stars on the inside. Which was already a surprise because nobody expected to have these very massive galaxies in such early universe. And then we have this second paper that identified 88 candidates. But interestingly enough, at least one of their candidates is at the redshift of 20. And that's when the universe was only 180 million years old, representing the distance of nearly 36 billion light years away from us. Which of course suggests that the stars very likely existed even before that. And that's of course completely unexpected, especially because these are very preliminary observations and very, very preliminary results. It means that within just a few years, we're going to be finding even more records of even more distant objects out there. Although once again, the scientists in this case do suggest that there are only very few of these galaxies that far away, with the majority existing at much lower redshifts of approximately 11. Nevertheless, these are somewhat unexpected and quite remarkable results and discoveries, and I'm sure for the next few months, a lot of scientists are going to be working super hard to try to figure all of this out. But it might actually take up to several years to finally come up with all of the necessary theories in order to explain what happened in this early universe and how these galaxies formed, and also more importantly, figure out when the first stars formed and what actually happened to these early galaxies as they grew in size. At the moment, all of this is a super exciting mystery, and nobody really knows any answers just yet. Which means that we're going to be talking about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out all of the relevant links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. 
Support the channel Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying one of the wonderful person t-shirts you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. And speaking of t-shirts and James Webb, there might be a new design somewhere in the link in the description that features the incredible telescope. Check it out if you'd like to help the channel grow.